What is up, YouTube? Um, gonna hit you with another bag update. It's been a while. Fall is officially here. It's my favorite time of year to play disc. Um, spring, too, and summer. Really just not winter. I don't like being out in the cold. But I love putting leagues. Hoping to get one started here in the Central Michigan area this winter. We'll see how that goes. You're probably going to see my dog in this video because it's just me and him chilling tonight. He's got a little pocket disc that he likes to uh, chase around. He might pop in and out. But I wanted to talk about my bag. It looks a little bit different since the, since the last time I made a video. And I want to talk about some things, too. Um, kind of heading into the next next year, next season. The USDGC just wrapped up last weekend. Kind of marking the end of the season. Um, so I just want to talk about some stuff. I played some tournaments this fall. Joined the CMU disc golf team for the first time. The uh, first time they've ever had a collegiate disc golf team. We've had awesome opportunities to play against some of the best programs in the country. Western Michigan, Fair State University. Um, both have finished really high, if not won the uh, National Collegiate Disc Golf Championships in the last couple of years. So really a lot of fun. Learning experience for sure. Um, but yeah, let's talk about what's in my bag. I've moved all three of my putters that I putt with most up into this putter pocket. Put a, a grip equipment golf bag on my Christmas and birthday list, both of which are in December. Um, you knew that about Christmas. Maybe you didn't know that about uh, my birthday. But hoping to upgrade in time for next season. But for now, i got my three putters. I actually I don't have any multiples of putters in my bag right now, which is something that's a little bit unconventional. Not many people do that. Definitely don't think any pros do that. Only carry one of each of their putters, but it's working for me right now. It's kind of just something that I've had felt comfortable with, felt confident in the last couple of months. So I got my my soft or my, not my soft, my Electron Firm Atom that I that I've been playing with. I like it because it's low profile. It's beadless. It floats. Goes straight. Um, Anything inside the circle, I'm really confident in this putter. Things that are a little bit further away, up shots, jump putts especially. Um, I'll go to my old organic wizard. Um, I have been using this a lot where I'm in trouble and I got like a step out putt from behind a bush or something that's still inside the circle, but it maybe is a little bit obstructed because I can pop this up and know that it's going to fade a little bit. And I, I also use the zone for that. I've been using that a lot more. I've been using all three putters inside the circle for different situations which is nice and, and nice to be able to do, nice to have the confidence to do. Um, I, I saved a par in the tournament that I played this weekend. Uh, my, my second shot kind of put me like 10, 20 feet or 10, 15 feet away, but I had to step out from behind this tree and there was a big like growth of a branch that came out around it. So I had like a window like this big, like six feet in front of my face that I had to hit. And then it was like a good three and a half feet to the left back and down to the basket. So I just popped this up, let it fade to the basket, saved a par. Um, but also this zone is great for upshots. It's my number one upshot putter, anything like 150, 200 feet out, just because it is so reliable. I can throw it flat and know that it's going to fade if I have enough room, or I can throw it really high on an extreme hyzer and know that wherever it hits, it's just going to sit and stick. I have a lot of confidence in this zone, so much confidence that I actually backed it up with one. It's not in the bag currently, as I said, um, but I had to get another one just in case this one, for whatever reason, gets understable or gives me a touch of turn or gets you know whatever probably not going to happen mostly just back it up in case i lose it so that is my putting game right now i feel like my putting is probably as good as it's been definitely all year if not um my like my entire disc golf career if you will so moving on to my mid-ranges i have transitioned to an all disc craft mid-range lineup um you know if you've watched any of my bag updates in the past, there was a time in my life, <laughs> not too long ago, um, where it was like Discraft only, Discraft forever, <laughs> because they're a Michigan company and I am from Michigan. And while I went away from that, when I when I really disced down uh, really a lot, I, I put a lot of Innova discs back in my bag, just because of the quality of the molds of like the T-Bird and the Leopard um, and the Cheetah and even things like the Orc as I kind of transitioned back into some more higher speed stuff, the Wraith. Um, but as I've gotten back to a place where, you know, after taking a year or two off of disc where I feel comfortable with my game again, I'm finding that just kind of naturally more and more disc craft stuff's going back in my bag. And it's not because I'm biased and I want to put disc craft in only, um, but it's really truly because Discraft is what fits for me. And so it's not really an opinion so much as it is just kind of fact now that Discraft is what I gravitate to. And that's just my opinion. I'm not going to try and sway you one way or another. But for me, Discraft 
is where it's at, especially from a mid-range standpoint. So I have the Buzz family of discs to a degree. I'm really hoping to find and get my hands on a Buzz OS in the near future because it will fit perfectly in my in my lineup, as I'll talk about in a minute. But I got this old beat-up SS. I'm not sure what the grammage, grammage? Is that even a word? I'm not sure what the gram weight is on this disc. I picked it up from a friend on trade. But this disc is awesome. Throw it flat, and it's got a big, nice turn. It always kind of checks up at the end. It's not one of those, unless you really pop it out on a perfect angle of an Anheuser, it's it's not really going to naturally try and find that spot where it settles down without ever fighting back and without cut rolling. It'll check up a little bit and come back, but it's really soft. Really, one of my favorite discs right now. I love throwing this thing. Obviously, the, uh, the TI Buzz, this one is... A little bit straighter than my Z, gives me a little bit more left to right action, settles down really nice. Uh, and then the Z, getting a little bit older, but it's max weight, 180 grams. Um, again, a little bit of left to right action as a buzz does, uh, but holds a really good hyzer, holds a really great anhyzer. Just all around great disc, you can't say enough about a buzz. I love it, I love the beadlessness of it, and I love the flat top. Those are the two things that work for me that I like to, to have in a mid range disc. Um, which is why I gravitated away from rocks. Uh, I know that the Rock 3 is flat top, but it still has that beaded um, bottom edge, and it just doesn't it doesn't feel as comfortable for me as something that's beadless. And and really, the consistency and the quality of the disc track molds is what keeps me coming back. So, and I have this Nebula, which is, oh, I've had it for a long time, it's out of production. It started to kind of turn a little bit on me, but it still has that nice, reliable finish. Flies pretty straight, and so I put it. I, I'm keeping it in the bag for now, but it has spent this fall. It spent a little bit of time out of my bag. <gasps> oh, excuse me. In favor of my uh, my old Flex drone. The drone is a great disc, especially as it's getting to be fall, getting a little windier. Um, it's just it's never going to be a disc that gives you any turn. It's going to go hard. It's going to go straight. It's going to go left. Um, the one complaint that I have with the drone is that it it has the aerodynamicness of a rock sometimes it seems like an actual rock like you know a rock not a rock the disc but you throw it out there and it goes not nearly as far as any of the other mid-ranges in my bag and then it just dumps and hits the ground and because this is flex plastic it doesn't ever give me a skip either um or if it does maybe a small one which is why i'd really like to put a, a buzz os kind of right in between the nebula and this because the nebula finishes just ever so slightly more overstable than my buzzes whereas i know a buzz would be more akin to this and stability would give me a little bit more of that glide that i'm looking for uh because this just kind of sits down which is a good shot to have in certain situations as i'm sure people can can attest to um but for that everyday mid-range shot that you need to go straight and finish left without any turn this just this just isn't there because it just drops out of the sky sometimes. So, but it's still in the bag right now, and I love it. Uh, a disc that has recently found its way into my bag that I'm feeling right now like I couldn't live without is this Latitude 64 OptoLine Triple X. Uh, this disc, again, I played a tournament this last weekend at uh, a course that's pretty woodsy, um, and if I if, if it's one of those courses where if you get even five ten feet off the fairway you have a decision to make, whether you're gonna try and squeeze it through some trees and get yourself further down the fairway, or whether you're gonna take the super safe bet, pitch out that five, 10 feet, and then have a look at the basket. This disc basically made that decision a no-brainer for me this weekend. I was gonna try and play a skip shot that gets me not only out into the fairway, but also advances me down the fairway a good amount of ways. It was a perfect compromise between those two, where you know if you try and pump one out there through some trees, your odds are not very good, but maybe there's a safer line that's closer where you can put it on the ground about 20 feet in front of you and let this skip just carry you another 20, if not 30 feet down the fairway. And I use this both forehand and backhand to get me out of trouble around tight corners. I threw this as a flick roller a couple times to work around tight corners to save par so many times. This this is definitely, if I had to pick one bet, or one disc that was in my bag that is legitimately shaved strokes off my game, this is the one because it's so versatile. Straight backhand, it's kind of like that drone there. It just goes and then just kind of and dumps. It has no glide. It's the most overstable disc I've ever seen. But in specialty shot situations, maybe a little flex ante forehand, flex ante backhand that just needs to get down and go crazy left and give you a skip. Any kind of trouble you can imagine yourself getting into on the course, this disc can get you out of it. I know a lot of people carry whippets and gazelles and things like that for the same thing. Those... 
in premium plastic, those are really tough to find. Um, unless you're a factory store junkie, uh, these are super easy to find, easily replaceable. And in my opinion, every bit is good. Uh, I've had some of those other discs in my bag before. This thing is just unreal. I love it. So that's the triple X. I got this Optoline River still not throwing it as much anymore uh, because of the addition of the JLS. I picked this up from a buddy. This is an old school disc, um, Millennium JLS. This one obviously you can kind of see, even just kind of looks a little more old school. It's fly dyed, which I'm, I've never been a super huge fan of, but man, is this disc amazing. I don't know if you've ever thrown one before in your life, but JLS, I'm not sure what the J stands for, but I'm pretty sure the L and the S stand for long and straight. Maybe this is just long and straight because that's pretty much what the disc does. I can throw it with every amount of bit that I can throw a T-Bird or any other fairway driver that I have. I usually birdie grip my, uh, my fairway drivers. And it goes straight. It really doesn't give me a whole lot of left to right action. And it really doesn't give me a whole lot of right to left action either. It goes pretty dead straight. And it's fit into a perfect spot between my old beat up star T-Bird that gives me a lot of that left to right action. And a, a real good finish like a T-Bird does. and just flies really straight and true overall. But it takes a lot of room to get that straight flight. This one doesn't take a lot of room to get that straight flight, and it fits perfectly between that Star T-Bird and this Champ T-Bird that I just picked up off a of trade. That's pretty new, max weight, does what a new T-Bird does, goes straight, finishes left. So that's like my, my bread and butter of my fairway lineup right now. And then this Saint Pro. This Saint Pro is just, it's giving me fits. I don't know what to, I don't know what to make of it um, because I was under the impression from everyone that I've read about this disc online that this disc is kind of like a T-Bird. It goes straight, maybe a little bit of left to right turn, big finish. This one is super flat, which I'm not sure if that is part of the problem. Super flat, just goes hard turnover right on me. I keep it in the bag because it's, it, it is a good hyzer flip tunnel shot for me right now. Um, but honestly, if I needed to take this out of the bag right now, I probably could. Then I got my Sampos. I backed up the one that I got at the Trilogy Challenge with another one. Uh, this one's 170, this one's 174, I think. So this one's a little bit more squirrely into a headwind, but Sampos are like one of my go-tos right now just because they're a smaller rim, they're speed 10, but they're super reliable. They go straight, kind of like a, the brand new T-Bird, but they fade a little harder, go a little farther. So I love the Sampo. Super glad they're running it in production runs now. Um, hoping to get my hands on one of those. This is a new disc to my bag, the Discraft Flash. Um, and, and I've really started to go to this more often lately because it's it's a, on the Discraft scale, it's rated 1.5, kind of middle of the road between my Nuke and my Crank, but it's a little slower. Uh, but what I like about the Flash is that it, uh, it it's beefy enough to handle a headwind on a distance line. So I can throw it flat into a headwind and get that big turn that always comes back and finishes really hard. Whereas if I were to throw even like one of my forces into into the into a headwind, it's not going to give me quite as much distance because it's not going to flex quite as much, uh, and it's going to come back a lot more than my crank, but we'll get to those discs here in a minute. But yeah, the flash. It's got a deep rim, kind of like my first round nuke that I have, really easy to grip, really easy to hold on to, and I've thrown a lot of flicks forehands with this too, as I've been working on forehands. Um, but to me, this disc feels in the hand kind of like a cross between um, my nuke and a pred. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit slower. But definitely the flat top and the rim feel kind of close to a, a Predator. Speaking of the Predator, it's fall. This, this disc never leaves, my, never leaves my bag just because it's so fantastic. But it's fall, which means it's time for the Predator to do its thing. Um, dead into a headwind. I threw this out on the course today. Like a 320-foot headwind. I just fan-gripped it, put it on a little bit of a hyzer, parked a hole. It's like I almost like fall more than summer just for the simple fact that it makes shot selection easier because I, I I have to throw the predator or something else that's just wicked stable um, but I love it it's it's one of those discs that it's always going to do exactly the same thing no matter what and I don't think anyone can have a disc ha I don't think anyone can go without a disc like that because it's such a valuable shot to have in your bag but I got this old nuke uh, I think I just called my first run nuke it's not a first run I don't think it's a it's a 2010 tournament stamp, but it's it's deeper. It's got a deeper rim than the newer nukes, so it's it's 
before the retooling happened, whenever that was. It's from 2010. It's got the date right on it. Um, it's that kind of more of a rubbery run of ESP plastic. I'm kind of like more protecting it because it feels like a little bit, a little bit less um, durable than some of the newer runs of ESP. But it, it just it goes really far, especially like a tailwind on a big Anheuser. Um, just holds that ante forever and then fights back. And I love I love this disc. Max distance without anything. Uh, in the way, probably going to throw a nuke. Uh, this force, I got two forces. Um, this one's a little newer, a little less beat up. I throw this primarily into a headwind because it holds the headwind really well. It's 174 grams. Um, yeah, I, I'm gravitating more towards forces lately just because of their stability. I threw this one on a hole today, like a 370-something foot hole. Just pop it out to the right. Let it ride. It goes dead straight. Finishes left. Um, this one actually, is, it, it's starting to finish a little bit softer than it used to. Um, maybe time for, for a new one to put in the bag. This is my old force. This is like my long turnover shot force or like big distance hyzer flip. Put it out on, on a bit of a hyzer and it pops up and rides and it comes back and it just goes really far. This is probably in ideal situations the farthest flying disc that I have just because it has so much... If there's nothing in the way, it just has so much potential to ride out to the left and come back, or out to the right and come back left. Uh, and then my crank, probably going to need a new one of these here really soon. Uh, I used to throw that force, like early, like maybe a month and a half ago, I was throwing that force off the tee like 80% of the time, and then the other 20% was this crank mostly. Um, and that the force got a little more understable as that month went by, and this crank has kind of started to fit that spot. Just really easy off the tee. Nice kind of soft S turns um, with a good finish, good skip. Love this disc. Super easy to throw. It's like a perfectly seasoned nuke. Just a little bit slower, a little more controllable. Um, yeah, it's a first run, which I love just because first run discs are cool. Um, yeah, probably get a Z one here pretty soon or start of next season, whatever I feel. And then my last two discs, kind of my, my big meat hook discs. Uh, this destroyer, Phoenix Destroyer, Team Phoenix Destroyer, um, Echo Star. It started to get. I, I actually have been throwing this a little bit more. It's got a little bit more of a finish, uh, right to left than the Force does, but it goes really straight, really far, um, and it's got that nice pop top, heartbeat sound that that I love a lot. Hey, that's just me. Look, my dog's growling at my discs because it makes makes a noise. Um, he's a goofball. And then I got the West Side Giant. The West Side, I, I don't know what to do about it. I'm not liking it as much as I hoped. Um, for some reason, I can, I, I can never seem to release it on the right, on, on the angle I intend. And I'm not sure. I loved the elastoplastic in the Sampo. Um, and I'm wondering if maybe just because of the extra thickness of the rim, the higher speed driver, if maybe it's just the elastoplastic just giving me... Some fits. I'm not really sure. It's, I mean, it's not going to come out of the bag right now. I'm just going to have to put in some more work with it and learn it a little bit better because it is a really great disc. It's similar to the Destroyer in stability, uh, you know, low speed stability, but it gives me a little bit touch more right to left. I feel like I could probably really pump it out there on a big Anheuser and let it sweep and, and do its thing and give me some big distance, but I just haven't really put the time in to learn it yet because I've been playing so much and have so many other discs that I love to throw. But that is my bag. Trilogy Challenge Judge Mini. To replace the one that my dog ate that I actually got in the Trilogy Challenge. Got some other stuff, bug spray, dynamic discs, uh, this thing, clipboard, that's the word. Yeah, like I said, awesome fall golf ahead. Hopefully an awesome new bag for next season. This one has seen some things out there on the course, and it's getting pretty rough. But uh, I loved it. Fade gear, shout out to them. Shout out to... Uh, the Disc Golf app that I've been playing, Disc Golf Unchained, it's free on the App Store, Android Store, whatever you do. Shoot, that's a great way to, if it's windy and crappy outside, it's a great way to get a Disc Golf fix on, on your phone, and it's free. Go download it. It's awesome. That's it. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Peace.